warns it's facing a shortage during the holidays. The word coming from the CEO who blames increased demand and a labor shortage. Americans turning into cookie monsters, gobbling up 25% more cookies during the pandemic, according to top data. Campbell's does not use third-party manufacturers for these brands due to their unique shapes and designs, making it harder for the company to ramp up production to meet America's appetite. CJ Papa, Fox News. Ellen DeGeneres has tested positive for the coronavirus, but says she is feeling fine, writing on Twitter that mm-hmm. all her close contacts have been notified. She says she is following health guidelines and would return to her talk show after the holidays. I'm Lisa Lacerra, and this is Fox News. Others say it. We prove it. We are controlling transmission. WLTK DB. Let's talk. Alternative Talk Radio. WLTKDB.com. Views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest. Any content provided by our host or guest are of their opinion and do not intend to harm any religions, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the show. fascinated with the unknown and paranormal realms since childhood. After a profound experience with my grandmother's spirit 20 years ago, I have been on a quest to observe, study, investigate, and communicate with the afterlife and beyond. It's been an ongoing journey of exploration and discovery, one that has taught me how mortality and the spirit world are forever bonded through the veil of time. Hello, everyone. I hope you are doing well this evening on December 10th. Welcome to another episode of the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond. I am your host, Nicole Strickland, on the WLTKDB network. That's WLTKDB.com or the Let's Talk.com. Please join us in chat because tonight's guest is gracious enough to be offering a free book giveaway. And I must say her books are fantastic. I've read them in one night. I couldn't put them down. They're amazing. So tonight's guest, I'm very, I'm looking forward to this as I do all my guests, but I met her in, at the Oregon Ghost Conference in 2015, and we've become friends ever since. Karen Anderson, she's a renowned animal communicator, best-selling author of The Amazing Afterlife of Animals and Hear All Creatures. Welcome to the show, Karen. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, and I'm excited to be here tonight, and I'm excited for you and your new show. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's a journey, I guess. I've kind of, I've always been thinking about having a show, and I guess the stars align just right, and I debuted it October 8th, 2020. I had my mom on as my first guest, which was really cool. So here we are. So thank you for joining me. Uh, it's it's really, it. really an honor. Happy to be here. Yeah. Right up my alley. You're, you're speaking my language here. Uh, I know, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? I have my little girl, Kaylee, right here. She's actually eating on her food on the floor down there. Sometimes she likes to make little announcements throughout the show, but oh, we'll see. She might I've be a little... One. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. It's all good. She'll show up, I'm sure, through the show somewhere. Yeah, it's all good. I love it. You know, that's what makes <laughs> it very special. So uh, let's start out. I mean, I'm sure a lot of listeners know you and know your background, but in case we have a few that don't, what got you started on your journey in the animal communication realm? Like, when did that start? When did you start realizing that you had the gifts to, to communicate with pets? I mean, I, I just think it's so amazing because not, a, not everyone can. Well, it is a, it's a, very crazy journey, but uh, to make it real simple for you, I could 
understand animals as a child, as I think most kids are very intuitive. Yes. But I thought everyone could. I didn't know that I was doing something different or unique that any of the parents might not understand. And uh, it wasn't until many, many years later as an adult that I reawakened, if you will, those Mm -hmm. intuitive abilities because I became a deputy in Colorado. (gasps) That's right. And it was while I was on patrol in the mountains, uh, in the Rocky Mountains, that I was working alone on the graveyard shift Mm -hmm. at 8,000 feet. And I had to respond to all calls, you know, whatever they were, I had to respond to them. So I had to work very smart. Yes. Just for my own personal safety. Of course. And it was during those years that I began to read people, the energy of people and And really, it was just for my own personal safety. I didn't have the intention of it being for for animal communication. And so I kind of had a reawakening, if you will. Uh, And and it just just snowballed from there. It It, just, yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's almost, you know what? It's almost like it was all meant to be, you know, this, this yeah, yeah, it's your path in life. And that's kind of how I take it. Yep. Someone was trying to kick me and go, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. I mean, you're so fabulous at it, too. I mean, I think, you know, I I believe that we're all intuitive. Just some people may not be aware of that, maybe not open to it. I think we all have the capacity to channel and and be intuitive. Like I've said before, I kind of equate it to a sport. I've said this on other shows. The more you're exposed to it, the more you practice, the better your skills will get. But yet I do think some people are just more natural at it. And so I just think to have that ability to know what an animal is thinking and feeling is just so important because a lot of times, I mean, even with me, with my animals, sometimes I don't know what they're saying and I want to understand it. So how is it, in your opinion, how is it different to channel an animal versus human energy? Or I'm sure there's similarities, but I'm sure there's differences as well. Well, in many ways, they're very similar, but I started out only wanting to connect with the pets. I only yeah. wanted to hear what the animals were saying. And especially after being a cop, I really didn't like people very much. So it was like, <laughs> 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 say, like <laughs> yeah, I had enough of you. I, I arrested you. Go away. <laughs> so, <Please. laughs> um, just uh, all seriousness, though, I was truly, to me, it was. It was a, a dream a come true to be able to understand what animals were thinking. I mean, who wouldn't want to know what their pet was thinking or if there was something wrong with them or to exactly. help them ease their stress or their fear. So I really think that it is uh, something that I just was passionate about. And for anyone who's listening tonight, this applies to whatever your passion is. You know, it maybe your passion is singing. Maybe your passion is mm-hmm. playing piano or, or cooking or whatever your passion is. When you honor it, yes. when you stand okay. in the truth of your passion and you pursue it with your whole heart, you, nothing will stop you. You just, you have to be willing to follow truly the path that you are feeling drawn toward and don't let anyone stand in your way. Don't let anyone tell you you can't or you're not smart enough or you don't have the skills or whatever. And you just have to really listen to your heart. And that's what I did. I listened to my heart and the people just started coming through. <laughs> uninvited. <See>? Yeah, <laughs> uninvited. Yeah, right. They were, they were uninvited and uh, I couldn't help it. I was like shocked the first couple of times it happened. I didn't know what was going on. It felt really weird. I could feel somebody's energy coming through, but I didn't quite understand what was happening because the animal energy, we all vibrate. We're all made of energy. So at a certain speed, for instance, like uh, put your, your fan on medium. People, departed humans, vibrate much faster. So put it on high. And that, to me, is how the vibration is for a human. So I didn't have to work as hard to connect with an animal because they weren't vibrating as fast. So to connect with a human, I found I had to raise my vibration much higher. They had to lower their vibration much lower so we could talk to each other because we had to meet in the middle. Yes. So it's a process 
it's a total process of understanding, you know, how energy works and how to adjust yourself. But for me, the pets were much, much easier. I was far more interested in what the animals had to say than what the people had to say. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I think, too, it might be a little easier for animals to come through because they don't know what it's like to operate through a, a, a polluted sort of ego. I mean, they're just coming through with what they know innately. So I think that that, I would assume that that helps the process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they are, they're pure. Yes. They don't have agendas except for cats. cats oh, oh yeah, I, I get that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. And oh um, you know, truly what was so weird is that I would be on a, on a crime scene and what started happening, Nicole, was what it totally freaked me out. The animals, the pets on the crime scene started giving me information about what happened. Oh, yes, I can imagine. But that was what really catapulted me, pun intended there, into what? What did I, what did I just hear? What did you just tell me? And what I realized is that the animals were more accurate than the human eyewitness oh, that's... because they didn't have that agenda right yes right how I mean how would how did you deal with that I mean would you take that information and share it I mean or were you <laughs> no I know I know I'm like I'm I, I I'm sure you would like to but I mean that would be very helpful I'm wondering I thought if... there was something wrong with me I really thought I had like a disease or something like, <laughs> wrong with me. <laughs> the hearing voices disease yeah I did I, I thought, mean I can imagine I, but I, gone off the deep end. I'm crazy here. And then when I realized that what was happening, it, it took me a little bit to figure it out, but I started to see patterns and I started to go, whoa, was this really possible? Right. And mm -hmm. if it is possible, or how much information can I obtain from a resident pet? So it was a shock and no, I didn't tell anyone. Can you imagine if I put in my place? I know, report? I know, I know. That was kind of a dumb question. I think what I was wanting to ask is, <laughs> is there a way to relay some information without letting them know, you know what, I got this information from the cat over here. Yeah. You know, is there a sneaky way to do that? It my would help. Confidential, my confidential informants have four legs and a tail. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That wouldn't fly. My sergeant would have kicked that report back to me. So what I did is I just started using that as just another tool, basically. You know, as a, as a police officer, you investigate, you use all whatever information you have available to you to put to connect the dots on, yes. in, on any case. So it was, just became part of my investigative process. There weren't pets on every scene, so I couldn't, you know, rely on that every single time. But where there were pets... I found that they could really relate very accurate information, very detailed information that wasn't biased. You know, they didn't really, they weren't trying to get anyone in trouble, but they weren't trying to protect anyone. And they would tell me or show me what happened or where someone was hiding. And that to me blew my mind. And That's I thought, amazing. Wow, if this is possible, then this is where, I, this is what I want to do. This is what just blew me away. And I was just at that point hooked, line, and sinkered in. I couldn't get enough. It's it's just like it. This was your natural path in life, you know. Do do animals like when you would be on cases like that? Did they communicate through words, or would you get like images, like a series, like movie scenes, for example, or would it be actually you hearing the words from the animal communicating? How how did that come through for you? I get mostly words and images. And the flashes would come through really fast. Yes. So if you weren't paying attention or if you were otherwise you know, distracted, you might miss them. But I began to hear words and get images as well. And again, they, they tell you a story. They connect the dots for you. So on the cases where I could actually have a moment to figure out what was going on, I used that as another tool, investigative tool, and it was incredible. I had um, a resident cat tell me where the suspect was hiding on a domestic violence case. Oh my goodness. In a previously searched garden shed. I had a, uh, uh, it was a dog that the little boy had wandered off from his home and disappeared into the national forest. And this, the family's dog told me 
I heard it, which direction the little boy went in. And so search and rescue went off in that direction and they found him in that direction. And, you know, this just kept happening. And it, it, it was something that I thought was crazy. And I thought I was crazy because it was happening, but at the same time I was fascinated and I wanted to just get better and better. So I just dove into it and learned as much as I could. And I practiced as much as I could. That's amazing. Well. And you said earlier something that really struck me too. You, it was something that was heartfelt for you. So you're, you're working with listening to your heart. And I think that, that that's the ultimate guide right then and there listening to your soul's wisdom, listening to your heart. And that's, that really, I mean, I think that that helps all of us. Just some people don't know how to tap into that or know that they can. So that, that's just so important. Would cat, I mean, most people have like dogs, cats, and birds, I would assume some, you know, horses, uh, reptiles, do all animals, I guess, communicate in the same way? Or are there differences between like, let's say a dog and a cat, or maybe it's dependent on their personality too. They're all a little unique. Every, every animal, just like mm -hmm. if every human is unique, just take, for instance, if you took 10 people and put them in a room and sat down and asked them the same 10 questions, mm -hmm. you're going to have a portion of those 10 people be really good at answering the question. They'll be really articulate and right. detailed and accurate. You're going to have a portion of those 10 people that are not, mm -hmm. that, that don't communicate well, that can't explain things as well. And most people are going to fall right in, this, in the middle. And that's, that's that makes sense. How is, that's how it is with all animals. You have some that are really good communicators and are really tuned into you, and then you have some that's like pulling teeth to get anything out of it. Right. Yeah, and it makes sense. Yeah, it's not a. Um, it's it has nothing to do with um, on on a personal level. It's just that there's a lot of atmosphere that these mm -hmm. messages have to come through, and if you if you think about it, I'm reading energy. Yes. So energy yes. is yes. filtering through layers and then having to get into my brain and I'm having to translate what they're sending me. There's a lot going on in that split second. Right. There's, there's a science behind it, but mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't need to know the science. You just need to trust that it works and roll with it. That's like so important. I mean, so important. What's your advice? Let's say someone wants to, uh, really work on understanding their animal a little bit better, working on wanting to channel that animal a little bit better. Do you have like a step-by-step -step advice for someone to start that process? I guess okay. it would be different for, for uh, each person depending on their own intuitive strengths, but is there a, a I guess a, a standard process that you think would work good for pretty much anyone? Yes, I have. There's about six basic steps that anyone can follow, okay. and there's nothing difficult about it. It's really just focusing on whoever it is that you want to communicate with and getting quiet in your mind and being receptive to receive the information because messages come through and they're very subtle. Yes. And if you're not paying attention, you'll miss them. And some animals will send lots of images. Some animals will send feelings. Mm -hmm. And some animals will send words. Right. So you, your brain is multitasking and trying to figure out what am I getting? What is this? And it'll almost always reject it the first few times you try. Especially, so, yeah, because the brain's constantly trying to make sense of, of everything. Yep. So, yeah. And uh, we as humans, when we don't understand something, we tend to fear it or yes. question it or doubt it or say it's my imagination or, you know, I must be crazy hearing voices. You know, we tend to really mm -hmm. discount what we're getting where back when we were first becoming human beings, we relied on these instincts. These were survival skills. Yes. And over the millennia, we have learned to kind of drown them out and not draw upon those abilities anymore because we don't have to. We don't have dinosaurs chasing us. <laughs> exactly. Not anymore. We Actually, we didn't do them live then. So I'm <laughs> <that>. Hello. <laughs> 
we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, our, our intuition keeping us safe um, so much anymore. So we really have to reawaken those uh, long uh, forgotten abilities. And, you know, the number one thing, I, I will tell you the number one recommendation that I have for anyone who wants to understand their pet on a higher, more spiritual level and understand the way I do is practice with pets you don't know. Oh, that's, yes, that's important. I think that very, very good point. Very, very good point. And then I imagine you can just start to see patterns. I know like when I've, for myself, sometimes when I uh, tune in to Max, uh, Kaylee's sister who departed in 2016, I'll see him a lot in uh, images like almost like a moving motion picture, if that makes sense. But anyways, let's hold that thought. I'll hold mine as well, because we have to take a couple of minute break. And then when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. You are listening to the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond. I'm your host, Nicole Strickland, with guest Karen Anderson. Stay tuned, folks. Controlling transmission. WLTK DB. Let's talk. Alternative Talk Radio. WLTK DB.com. Maggie Reiki is a full service Reiki therapy center offering both in person and distance Reiki sessions. Reiki is a gentle healing energy that can assist in clearing, repairing, and maintaining energy that is vital for optimal health. Reiki can also assist with anxiety, depression, and even addiction. You can schedule a Reiki session by visiting our website, www.mackeyreiki.com. That's www.mackeyreiki.com. Patreon is a place for creators. We're one of them. Visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash WLTKDB. Check out all the unique support tiers we offer. You can get early release episodes, station mugs and t-shirts, free station service work, and much more. Help the station reach its $1,000 per month goal to make our station totally ad-free. Patreon.com slash WLTKDB. We appreciate your support of all the radio stations in the world. We're one of them. We are controlling transmission. WLTK DB. Let's talk. Alternative Talk Radio. WLTK DB.com. Twenty-one minutes past the hour. You are listening to the Afterlife Chronicles and Beyond. I'm your host, Nicole Strickland, and tonight we have Karen Anderson on, renowned animal communicator and best-selling author of the amazing Afterlife of Animals, fantastic book, as well as her Hear All Creatures, both both best-selling books, amazing reads. So before the break, we were talking a little bit about Karen's journey and learning about how she started to communicate with animals in, in that process. And uh, right before the break, we were talking about steps, I guess a six step process. I think we were, I'm not sure exactly what step we were on, but the her six step process for people uh, to practice, to learn how to channel and, and communicate with their animals as well. So let's go ahead and continue that discussion. Uh, I do wanna remind uh, you to join the chat room too at WLTKDB.com or the let's talk.com. There will be a free book giveaway. Karen's very gracious to be doing that at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that. So let's go ahead and continue that, that discussion of the process for people learning how to um, communicate and be more in touch with their animals. Absolutely. So in the last uh, segment, I shared that, you know, the the number one thing you have to do is to practice with pets you're not familiar with. Yes. But you do have to realize that there is a learning curve. You know, just as we were sharing, you know, the brain has to get used to these incoming messages. Mm -hmm. And it's very common that it'll uh, block them <clears throat> just because it doesn't know what it is. So it just won't let it come into your consciousness. And most people want to learn because they want to connect with their own pets. So they get very impatient. Mm -hmm. They want to talk to their pets, but 
the problem with wanting to start with your own pets, and I think you should practice with both. <clears throat> However, you develop your confidence when you connect with pets you don't know, because you already know just about everything there is to know about your pet. I mean, what can your pet tell you that you would not know? <laughs> That's unless, true. Very unless true. you just adopted them and you don't know anything about them, but then if they tell you something, you have no way of validating it. There's that no is very true, yes. So you're going, well, I just got something about a past and I don't know if this is true or not. So then you doubt yourself. So right away, you're doubting, 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 doubting what you're getting. So that's why you have to work with somebody who has a pet that you are not familiar with. Because when you get something, like let's say, for instance, you're seeing a, a blue bowl or, you know, maybe a red toy or something, that person can validate for you if that makes sense to them, if they understand that message. That's how you develop your confidence and that's how you build your skill level. And eventually you will reach a point where you will recognize how you received that information. That's what it's all about. You have to train your brain what a message feels like, what it looks like, what it sounds like, because your brain's trying to block it. Yes. And then you can start to distinguish between... Yes what your brain almost wants you to think versus what's coming in intuitively. That exactly. makes a lot of sense. Exactly. So while I know you want to talk to your own pets, that's why I got into this too. It can be very frustrating because our brain will autofill, you know, autocorrect on your cell phone. Yes. You know, <laughs> yes. Okay. We know that. Your brain does the same thing. It, it'll autofill. And then you'll start to doubt that you're not really doing this, that you're, it's just your brain or your imagination, and you'll start to doubt, 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 and you'll go further down the rabbit hole. You know, I've been doing this for a very long time, almost 24 years, so wow. I've trained so many people, I've coached so many people on how to do this, and if you are just naturally intuitive and gifted and you can communicate with your own pets already, I say go for it, but if mm. you're not, and you just are learning or interested or, you know, hey, what's this crazy Karen Anderson talking about? I want to give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> I really recommend you have to be able to develop your confidence with pets that you are not familiar with, that you don't know the answers to. Because that, that's almost cheating. You're almost cheating. That's a good way of putting it. That is a very, and then I would imagine, you know, you start baby steps, little things. Mm -hmm. And then kind of add on as you go. Exactly. And, you know, it's just like um, a really good example of learning animal communication is, let's say, for instance, uh, you go to Italy tomorrow. You don't know how to speak the language. You step off the plane. You have to learn what every single word means. And it takes time you start to see patterns or you start to hear certain words over and over again and you can associate it with whatever that word is in Italian. Now you don't step off the plane and become fluent. You can't speak that language fluently, but the longer you're in Italy, the more you pick up, right? That is true. The same is true with animal communication. The more you practice, the more you pick up and the better you get at understanding the messages that are coming through. So it really is about just exposure, lots of practice, and really trusting the process. And a lot of people get frustrated because they want it now. They want it right away. Me, that was me. I oh, I, I'm, I'm the same way. It's like when I want something, I want it right now. And yes. I've, I've actually improved. I used to be a lot worse when I was younger. So I, I definitely understand that. I really like your analogies because it, it's more understandable when you, when you give an analogy. Um, such, I mean, I can't wait to start trying this myself. I mean, a lot of times, like you said, like with my own cats, I know them, but yeah, I would love to try this with other animals just to see and learn, you know, how I receive the information. Cause I imagine that everyone's a little bit different too. Such good. Oh my gosh. Such good advice. Um, in your opinion, what's the number one single most important message our animals want us to know? Well, I can tell you, um, I have actually three golden nuggets that I wanted to share with you tonight. Oh, great. And, yeah, three golden More nuggets. nuggets. The better. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I've communicated with so many animals over the last two decades. 
it's it's somewhere up into the twenty two thousand range. Oh my goodness, so Karen! I noticed, oh my goodness, know, <laughs> that's amazing. I, I know. It is. It's crazy. It's really crazy. But I, I was so passionate about it. I couldn't get enough of it. And every single session I had blew me away. So it was it's like addictive. You just keep going. You keep going further in to get more and more and more. So what I began to hear was some patterns. I began to hear mm. similar messages coming through different pets, different people, but I was getting similar messages. I can't help but pay attention to patterns. Intriguing. And when you do this mm -hmm. over and over again, and you have as many sessions as I have, you pay attention to these patterns because this is what where the real learning comes in. So here's three golden nuggets that the most important things that our departed pets want us to know. I'm talking departed. Uh, it can be a little different for pets that are alive and well, but let's talk about departed pets because that's really the, the hardest thing uh, is to lose one of our sweet babies. So, oh, absolutely. Um, we'll start with number three. So the third most important thing that our departed pets want us to know is that when they transition out of their body, when they pass away, when they go to the other side, the afterlife, our grief, no matter how deeply we grieve, will not harm them. It will not stop them on their journey. It will not cause them to be stuck it will not make them feel like they can't continue on their own spiritual journey. So you can grieve and honor your feelings and know that it is not going to harm your departed pet. I think that that's something that a lot of people uh, worry about. I myself have worried about that. You know, in my yes. grief, am I going to draw them, you know, back? Am I going to, you know, prevent them from moving onward, you know, but that, that's, that's comforting to know that. Right. Now, there's a little, a little but on the end of that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> even though our grief will not harm them on their spiritual journey, think about this, Nicole. Would you rather hang out with me if I was in the depths of grief or if I was happy and feeling good and positive and upbeat and joyful? Yes, absolutely. I would say the latter both but i would prefer you know a little bit more jovialness a little bit more happiness yes and the same is true with your departed pets it's not gonna make them want to stay away from you but they're going to gravitate toward you more when there is love coming from your heart when there's joy in your life when there's happiness that's like fuel to them so they're gonna feed off of that love that joy if you get another pet if you volunteer at a shelter if you help another animal if you love another animal they're gonna they're gonna benefit from that love that's coming from your heart so just keep that in mind they will always be near they will not be with you 100 percent of the time when they transition because why would they they're gonna go explore of course there's surroundings and go have fun but they will check in with you they will be around from time to time and if you are being really positive and upbeat they're going to want to spend more time with you than if you're in the depths of grief that that makes absolute complete sense yeah without a doubt okay. so and i'm guilty <laughs> oh i am too i mean i will admit it yep i'm guilty of of you know really uh, kind of living in grief and being stuck in grief and unresolved grief. I'm guilty, 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 guilty. I'm not anymore. I, I get through grief more quickly now than I did when I first started this journey many years ago. So I'm speaking from personal experience here. Um, okay, so are you ready for the number two golden nugget that are? Oh, I would like, I mean, keep them coming. Keep them coming. Okay. Number two, golden nugget. What our departed pets want us to know is that they do not grieve like we do when they leave their body. We very slip, interesting. We slip into grief very, very quickly, right? We get hit hard. It's like a, like a Mack truck hitting us. It, mm -hmm. it suffocates us. It paralyzes us. We can't breathe we can't function we can't get out of bed we can't face the world without them right 
it sucks the life right out of us. Not so for them. In fact, it's quite contrary to our experience. When they leave their body, the best way I can describe it, Nicole, is like an adrenaline rush, a good adrenaline rush, not a, not a bad, fearful one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But a really good adrenaline rush. So, for instance, if you've ever been to see like a, a concert, you know, in a big, you know, coliseum or something, and yeah. the crowd is just anticipating the star coming out or the band coming out and you're waiting and waiting and you know the energy is building and there's so much excitement mm -hmm. and then that band finally comes out and there's like yes there's like this exuberance and you just your heart is soaring that's what it feels like but a thousand times better this so, is so comforting to know i mean this is so helpful to people so Be when you are amazing struggling right? You're struggling. You're, you really can't even tie your shoes. I know I, I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't function. I'm like a complete blob. I can't do anything. I just can't face the day. And I've been there. I've had many, many animals over the years and before I became an animal communicator. And I, I went down that path. Yes. And, and it's held, never easy. No, I held on to that grief for decades, decades. Well, it's actually, oh, pretty much it doesn't serve either you or the pet when you do that. You could have spent all those years pumping positive energy, loving thoughts, happy memories, joyful times, and look what you did. You spent all that time with something that no longer serves either of you anymore. So I don't do that anymore. You can do it if you want to, but... Your pet is not going to grieve. Your pet is going to be having the time of its life, zipping around the cosmos without a body, uh, joyfully exploring their new surroundings. They're going to be immediately with loved ones. No one's ever lost. No one's ever by themselves. And they're not going to experience the same thing you're experiencing. That right there has taken, I feel like, the weight on my shoulder from having to deal with past animals that have transitioned that big weight of grief if you will I, I feel it almost lifting right now as you're telling me this if that makes sense good good i, 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 I do i feel like it's like i'm li it's 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 uplifting to know this i hope everyone listening is having the same epiphany the same light bulb moment going oh my gosh, I've totally done that. And oh my gosh, I don't have to do that. I mean, we have to grieve. It's, it's, it's our, the last thing we do to share our love with, with somebody we've lost, grief. That's what grief is. But grief is not our final destination. No. Grief is just not temporary. It's, it's how we are reacting to a very deep love and a very close bond and the loss of somebody that we love and adore. So grief is necessary and I want you to grieve. I want you to experience the pain, but just say it, say you're in pain, say you're hurting, say you can't function, say you can't breathe. Tell people I need help. I need support. I need somebody to just sit here and don't say anything. Just don't say anything. Just be here with me. Don't say anything. Just That's let me be, just let me be hurting let me be missing my pet i want you to grieve if you hold on to grief or push it down then you end up with unresolved grief and that's even worse yeah and that can linger so, for years i'm not saying that there's any shortcut yes i'm not saying there's any shortcut i don't want you to take the shortcut through grief i actually want you to feel all of the feelings but say that I'm really missing my pet today. I'm really feeling the pain, the loss. I feel like I can't breathe. I feel like I can't function. Say those things. It's okay. Come over to my Facebook page and be with us because there are people who understand and will support you and they know the depths of that grief. I do. And, and get this, I've got a great story to share with you there. So this was a, a horse of mine that was going down. She was dying. And I didn't know what I know now. And I went out to go feed in the morning. She was already down oh. and I panicked and I ran out to the corral and I threw myself around her neck and I started sobbing. And I'm like, please Dakota, don't die. Don't die. I mean, I'm just like on her, my whole body.
body's like hugging her, like, please don't die, please don't die. Well, when I was finally able to tune into her, you know what she said to me? I'd love to hear this. You need to go away. <laughs> Oh my God. I mean, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. But I mean, it, it, it was, it was like, what? Yeah. I mean, that's, right? you know, that's funny. You said that because Max Kaylee's sister, he, he, his transition was so quick. I mean, one week he was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy four or five days later down. That's it. Uh, lost oxygen to the brain it was horrible and he transitioned like I said within four or five days very quick and I'm okay now I've worked through the grief I, I almost feel like he's a part of me at all times but every once in a while I'll feel that grief and I almost envision him getting right in front of my face stop it like he just is like don't don't feel that way I'm fine I'm free. I'm healthy. I'm fine. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I'm so fine. this makes total. Yeah. This makes total sense. So here I was thinking that, you know, this is how you show your love to your pet. You throw yourself at them. You sob over them. You beg them not to die. And here my horse says, you need to go away. You're <laughs> so much worse. Get away from me. <laughs> Don't, you know, I'm already down. And now you're adding all of this extra burden. Get it away from me. So I backed off and I, it, she even snorted at me. Like in my mind, she was like, snort and like, you need to go away. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I'm feeling really stupid right now, but okay. So I backed off and I waited for the vet to get there. She ended up being okay, but that was, it's in my first book. You'll have to read her story, Dakota. She's in Hero Creatures. But I learned a big lesson that day. Huge. I learned a huge, huge lesson that day that what we bring to our pet can make them worse. That is so true. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Like I, I, like I said, I feel like the weights just lifting <laughs> off my shoulder, the <laughs> invisible weights. Yeah. Grief, okay. grief's a funny thing. It's, it's a really funny thing. I mean, there are some things people can do too, to help them move through grief, you know, journaling. I know for me, um, I planted, I mean, there's so many things you can do, but I, I planted a very nice succulent plant in a big bright green pot to match the color of Max's eyes when he passed away. So, you know, there's all these they little things that, that, that yeah. you can do. What are um, some other, I guess, um, things people can do to help them move through grief? Not, and I love what you said about not stopping the flow of grief, because mm -hmm. that's important. You don't want it to get clogged. Do you want it to flow how it's going to flow naturally? And I, that's, I think, a very important point for people um, even from to remind myself as well. But what are some other things, I mean, that work well for people that they can do after losing a beloved animal? Um, and, and you're talking with people and, and so forth. Well, I'll get to that in just a sec. I have to give you the number one thing. Oh, yeah. For... Hello. We were only on number two. Oh, it's been a long day. <laughs> Sorry about that. Only because I'll forget. So... Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> But I'll tell you now, then I'll don't get old, you forget things. It's all good. Okay, it's so the good. number one message I communicated with, I started to see these patterns, okay? So the number one thing they want us to know, they do not hold us responsible for their passing, even when accidents happen. Euthanasia accidents, mm -hmm. leaving the gate open, letting them slip the leash, uh, not bringing them in the house, letting them go out and wander around. They do not blame us for their passing. That right there changed my life because how many times did I blame myself after somebody died why didn't I do more? Why didn't I take them in sooner? Why didn't I do the surgery? Why didn't I do, give them the medication on time? Why did I leave mm -hmm. the gate open? You know, we run these loops through our head over and over. We beat ourselves up 
Yes. And I've, I've been there so many times. Mm -hmm. Could have should have. So what the animals tell me is that they don't see it that way. That is a human perspective. That is not an animal perspective. Even when accidents happen and you are directly responsible for what happened to your pet, they do not see it that way. I have communicated thousands of pets, Nicole, not a single one has ever said to me, my mom or my dad killed me or wow. did this to me. Not one. They will share their experience with me. They will show me, you know, if something happened to them, they'll, they'll flash that to me. Not all of them will, but some of them will, but not a single one ever has come back and blamed their parent, no matter what happened for their death. And that goes to show the unconditional love to that, that they have that right there. I, I would assume no, obviously is a sign of that. They know that. They know that we will do anything within our power to keep them safe mm -hmm. and they don't see it that way. Now, if you set out to harm your pet, different story. Right. Of course. But how, how many people do that? You know, I'm sure there's, I don't even want to go there, but you know, we love our pets. We would do anything to keep them safe and have long lives and happy lives. So they know that, that, that is a, a trust that's built in their DNA. So yes. when something terrible happens, an accident happens, I have right now in my Facebook group, it's a, an animal communication Facebook group. I have pet parents in there. Um, one in particular is coming to mind. She lost her dog by a freak accident mm. of she left mm -hmm. the dog at home while she just ran a few errands. When she came back, the dog had stuck its head into a cereal box that oh, she left there for a mm. Yeah. So um, you can imagine what she came home to. I, I can't even imagine. I, I know. It's like my heart's like clenching up right now just yes, talking about it. Yes, mine is too. I, I can't even so imagine even, that. No, even when things like this happen, you know, you you beat yourself up if why did I go to the store why did I leave the box there why did I why 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 and yet the animals don't see it that way they just see it as this is something that happened to them they take responsibility for whatever it was and not even so much in the way that a human would take responsibility like I'm the one who did this they don't see it that way because they don't feel the need to that's a human perspective so human and animal see things differently experience things differently. Our pets are not people as much as we think they are. They're animals with animal instincts right. and animal perspective. And take away anybody that is listening tonight and you're holding on to guilt or remorse or grief about what happened to your pet if things did not end the way that you wanted, then these messages are for you. This is why you're here tonight listening. This is to help you move through that so you can get yourself on the other side of that grief and into healing because your pet wants you to. They don't want you to stay in grief. You're no fun when you're in grief. I know, right? I mean, this is, this is such salient advice and can apply to so many. I mean, can apply to everyone. I mean, I, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing this. I mean, it's like I said, I keep saying this, but it's, helped me you know live these weights that have been on my shoulder from past animals that have passed I mean I just feel them lifting it's just amazing oh my goodness you know what it's 6 47 time I don't know what <laughs> I say this on every show it's like really Nicole's gonna say this again but time flies by I don't even it's crazy on radio if you had to pick, and this is kind of a, a, probably a hard question, but maybe, maybe I'll rephrase it. What's one experience that you've had with an animal in the afterlife that has been extremely profound for you? Or an, like any sort of spiritual experience um, with one of your pets or even one of your um, clients? Yeah. Obviously, confidential no names really, or anything, but yeah. Right, right. Okay, so one of the most powerful ones, and, and I mean, this really kind of stopped me in my tracks. It takes a lot to impress me when it comes to my own sessions, because <laughs> like I've been doing it for so long, it's got to really yeah. be 
for me to be like, whoa, you know. Yeah, so many too. You've had so many experiences. So, um, right. So this was really powerful. It, it was a client who came to me because uh, her cat passed away. Um, accidentally, she was late for work and she was backing out of her driveway and mm. she had the cat. Oh my God. The cat didn't die right away. The cat lived for a little while longer and um, ultimately died from its injuries. And one of the things that I always do before a session is I always just spend time with the animal beforehand just to kind of sense their energy and see if there's any messages they want to share. Sometimes they're more open before the human gets on the phone. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're way more animated when, once I have the client on the phone. And so I was just spending time with this cat and I just felt how wonderful it felt. It felt like being in a pool of like warm butter is the best way I can describe it. It was like, I get that really mm -hmm. comfortable and yummy. And you just wanted to stay in this space with this cat. So uh, the client gets on the phone with me and we're going through the session and I kept hearing about the cat didn't mention this before but during the session with the client on the phone i kept hearing about amputated leg amputated leg amputated leg and i kept seeing like the image of a leg and i thought oh how awful the cat probably lost a leg during this accident and that's probably why it died animals don't always share the gory details that's another human perspective they don't share gory details. They don't, it doesn't matter to them. So I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to upset the client, mm -hmm. right? I mean, she was already feeling bad enough as it was. Of course. So I didn't say anything, but Nicole, it came three times. And anytime I get a message three times, I pay attention because it's something important. So with the insistence of the cat wanting to me, wanting me to share this message, I finally said, and when I start a session, I don't know anything. I know the pet's name. If they're living or deceased and what the goals are that's all i know i don't know the whole story so i finally said to my client i'm really sorry i know this is a really touchy subject so please forgive me but i keep hearing about an amputated leg you know is that what your kitty died from or did he have to have a leg amputated and she starts crying oh my on goodness the phone. and i'm like oh way to go karen you know way to go so when she finally got her composure back, she said, I'm so sorry, you know, I shouldn't have brought it up. And she goes, no, 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 you don't understand. You just don't understand what you just said. You have no idea. You just released me from all of this guilt. And I can't, I'm trying to figure out why, what did I say that would release her from all this guilt? Well, Kitty died from complications of infection after she hit him. Um, but oh, several months yeah. after Kitty died, she had a car accident and she had her leg amputated. Oh my goodness. We're having a little bit of an internet connection, guys. Stay, or internet issue here. Stay tuned. Um, you there? I'm here. That was weird. That's never happened before. Like, all of a sudden, my screen just, uh, like, like, you paused, and then... I was feeling it. It was hitting me. It was, there was a lot of energy. Because That's so was, bizarre. And it's like my screen turned off. I mean, it literally just went off and I'm like, okay, that's weird. Well, hello, you know, call, you know, energy, whatever electronics. That's, that's bizarre. Still having, oh my goodness. I do not what's, know what's going on here. Let's see. Are you there? Can you guys hear me?
Are you guys back? Fifty-five minutes past the hour. This is a little rarity here, folks. Nicole's having some internet difficulties on her end. Lord only knows what's happening. I don't know. I think Karen broke it. But man, Karen, it was an amazing, amazing show with you. Thank you so much for taking time to come on. Thank you. I had a great time. Sorry, I broke your. Airways. Can you guys? Yes. Oh yeah. Never mind. Muted. Yes. There there, okay, Nicole is back. Go ahead, and you can take us out now, Nicole. Well, stay on. Stay with me, um, just in case. This has never, ever happened before. I mean, I'm no. looking at my Mac right now. It's showing that my internet's perfectly fine. Uh, this has never happened. I, I mean, and then and then the music was going extremely fast, then slowing down, going extremely fast. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Thank you for your patience, Karen. Your patience. My pay, I was like, what's going on? I'm sure people were like, oh my goodness. But anyways, okay, we have four minutes left. Todd's on standby in case this happens again. Again, I apologize, but let's get your, uh, let's do your, your book giveaways. So um, whoever's in chat. So Karen talked about, you know, the three nuggets. If you can, if, if anyone can, nuggets. yeah, those golden nuggets, excuse me. So if someone can name one of those. First person to do that gets a copy of, uh, and what book are you giving away again? The amazing awesome. Of animals. I have it right here as well. Excellent read, guys. Excellent read. So what you can do is, um, whoever the winner is, um, email me your uh, address. If you're in the United States, you can get a uh, paperback outside of the U.S. Uh, ebook. So uh, email me your address, Nicole, P-I-S-D, that's N-I-C-O-L-E, P as in Paul, I-S-D as in dog, at gmail.com, and we'll get that out to you shortly. Again, I apologize. Like I said, that has never happened before. It was the strangest thing. So thank you for your patience. Karen, I do want to have you back on because there's so much more that we can talk about. So um, we'll get you back on. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I know there was, there's like a couple of minutes left if, and then I think my internet's kind of going out again. I'm not even sure if you guys can hear me, but, um, if you can maybe in about a minute, um, any sort of events that are coming up for you and then we will end the show with my bad internet connection. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I have an afterlife masterclass coming up in January. Fantastic. And uh, that'll be a two hour virtual class where you can learn to connect with pets on the other side. And you can get all the details. I also have a mobile app. You can download my free mobile app if you go to my website, which is very simply karenanderson.net. Or I think Nicole, you have all my links somewhere, don't you? Yes, I have all your links. Absolutely. I don't know if you can. You have all my links. Okay. Yes. Um, you can opt in and get all kinds of freebies. I have a free animal communication e guide handbook. There are free book offers. There are ebook offers. There's a, a free Facebook practice group where you can join us and and learn how to connect. So. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. It's You're busy. Good for you. You've helped myself. You've helped so many people tonight. I can't thank you enough. I look forward to having you back on. 
Uh, so sorry again, folks, for that connection. We're about one minute till the end of the show. So I do want to leave you with this ending thought here. We here at the Afterlife Chronicles, we're bridging the gap between mortality in the afterlife, one experience at a time. Thank you for tuning in and have a great night. Good night. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh my gosh, that was so, <laughs> oh my God, it was so weird. Like my screen went out twice, completely like went black and then it came back on and then it went out again. And then the music was speeding up, slowing down. I'm like, what's going on here? Oh my God, I, I know. felt it. It was hitting me right in the center of my chest. I'm like, whoa. I mean, it, like, was, is there any paranormal <laughs> stuff going on here? I mean, sure. What's going on? I'm coming down. I don't know, but oh my gosh, thank you so much, Karen. I, this kind of stuff happens. I just got a message here. It says, Karen broke the internet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. No, no, I kid you not. Like my, the bumper music was going like <laughs> beating up super fast, slowing down. I mean, I felt like some weird energy at that moment. You did too. I did too. But I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, oh my gosh. I mean, <laughs> Pa, thanks for saving us there at that moment. I think Karen, Karen brought some mojo with her. <laughs> yes, she sure did. Oh, my God. Blame it on me. I'll take the fall for it. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Oh my Thanks, gosh. you guys. This was so fun. I really had a great time. Oh, me too. And we'll get you back on as well. So what I can do is um, once I get the winner, I can send you uh, their address. And then yep. you can ship. Awesome. They're going to love these books. I mean, they're sitting proud on my shelves oh, so yeah so awesome and have a if i don't talk to you before christmas i'm sure i will i hope you have a wonderful holiday thank you you too i take yeah. the last two weeks of the year off so i can regroup and uh, get centered and unplug and, yeah and you know we're all so plugged in all the time. yeah and i just need couple of weeks to like decompress so. that's and it's the perfect time to do that as that's well so my two weeks of the year awesome uh -oh, where you go again yeah all right I, I better get going my it's my i don't know what's going on with my computer and i just uh, never happened okay. but my internet's choppy but um i'll be in touch all right guys i don't know if you can hear me but i'm gonna go ahead and leave the meeting okay good night, guys good. and i'll and i'll be in touch with uh the winner's address and everything Good night, everyone. Good night. And happy holidays to you, Karen. Good night. Happy holidays to you, too. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.